What's up sports fans? This is the Lucas Ross Sports Channel. It's time to continue my 2023 schedule preview and projected records for the 2023 college football season. We continue them with the Colorado Buffaloes. Here was a schedule last year for this Colorado team. The overall record last year going 1-11 overall in 2022. So a very disastrous year for this Colorado team last year. It wasn't a, just a disappointment. It was a disastrous year of for this team last year in 2022. And you look at the schedule, you look at who they played in the non-conference. They played TCU, Air Force, and then Minnesota here on the road. So they did have a tough non-conference schedule last year. You know, of course, TCU, they ended up going to the college football playoff. And then Air Force um, ended up winning a bowl game last year. And Minnesota turned out to be a decent team. They were 9-4 and four last year. And again, this was a very tough, very tough non-conference schedule. And they just had a really overall uh, brutal stretch, you know, from those first five weeks of September. And then, of course, the last few weeks of the regular season. And they got at least one win last year in the Pac-12 conference. And that was against Cal there on October the 15th. So, but again... The overall schedule last year for this Colorado team was really brutal, and also it was just a really brutal season for this Colorado team. But a new era coming in for this Colorado team, and this year, you know, they have Deion Sanders coming in as the head coach, and they got a you know group of talented you know players on this roster this year. The question though, how good will they be? I mean, this projection is just going to be based off of where this team was from last year. So let's now get to the schedule for 2023. Here's a schedule for Colorado heading into 2023 and you look at who they'll play in the non-conference this year uh, they'll play TCU once again this time it will be on the road so they'll play that one in week number one once again and then they'll play Nebraska here out of the Big Ten on September 9th and then they'll play Colorado State here on September 16th um, you know non-conference schedule kind of similar to last year they did play two power five teams last year in Nebraska you know or actually Minnesota and TCU this time they will play them again you know this time it will be Nebraska here on September 9th they will get that game at home and obviously Colorado State is the only cupcake game on this schedule I know that's a team that you know consider a rivalry perhaps but it's not going to be an easy game for Colorado. I think all three of these non-conference games won't be easy for them. So they do have a pretty tough non-conference schedule uh, once again. And they almost we almost know they're going to be playing almost every single Pac-12 team on this schedule. I think the good news, they don't have to play Washington on this schedule. That's the good news there. But they don't play Cal, and that's kind of bad news there for this Colorado team. You know, I'd rather you'd rather play Cal and stuff, you know, on this schedule instead of all these other teams. But let's go game by game now for this Colorado team. So they'll start this season off with their three non-conference games here in the month of September. They'll play TCU here on the road. Team that went to the playoff last year, Nebraska, then Colorado State here, both at home. Uh, Nebraska is going to be a question mark heading into this year, but they could be a really good team. You never know. And then Colorado State here on September 16. That's kind of like a rival game, perhaps. I kind of wish this is a, this is a game that's played every single year. Of course, you know Colorado State's not a Power Five team. They are a Group of Five team, so and they also weren't that good last year. So I'm kind of expecting Colorado to be a big favorite here. Then they'll play Oregon here to open up Pac-12 play on September 23rd. So that's a pretty tough start to open up Pac-12 play. Then they'll play USC after that on September 30th. Arizona State on the road on October 7th. Then they'll play a Friday night game here against Stanford on October the 13th. And then they'll get a bye week after playing that game. That's a very winnable game for them. I think both of those games, Arizona State and Stanford, are very winnable games. And then they'll play UCLA on the road out of the bye week. So... That is a tough road game there for against UCLA, a team that, you know, was really good last year. Then they'll play Oregon State after that on November 4th. Uh, they'll get this game at home and then Arizona here on November the 11th. And this is a Colorado team that I don't really think people want to play in the month of November. They might be better by this time. They might get that talent together. They may not, you know, have a really good season, but this is a team that you probably don't want to play in the month of November. Then they'll play Washington State, though, after Arizona on November 17th. This will be another Friday game. It will be on the road. And they also will have back-to-back -back road games here with Utah and Washington State. Uh, they'll end things out, though, with Utah here on November 25th. So the schedule 
is really tough for Colorado. It's really not that brutal, but you know, it is a tough schedule for this Colorado team, especially with a non-conference schedule. It makes it a lot tougher for this Colorado team. So how good would this team be in 2023? I'm um, hard to say for right now, but this is just going to be based off of where this team was last year. Let's now get to the projection for this Colorado team. This is the scale I use for my projections. If it's a 1% game, these are games where Colorado has no chance of winning 20%. Uh, there'll be a couple touchdowns of underdogs in the orange, 40% in the yellow. Uh, these are games where they're going to be a heavy underdog in about a touchdown. 50-50 games, these will stay in the white. Games where they can go either way. 60% uh, games, they'll be favored by at least a touchdown in the purple. And then 80% games, they'll be favored by a couple touchdowns and double digits. And then the green games, these are the easy wins for Colorado. They're going to be favored by more than three touchdowns. And surprisingly, I don't have any easy wins here for Colorado on this schedule, just based off of where they were last year. And the whole entire schedule is almost, you know, Pac-12 teams. But we're going to start with the blue games here for Colorado. And I really just got one blue game on this schedule. And that's Colorado. Colorado State. This is the only easy win I see for Colorado heading into this season. However, it's only by double digits, though, because Colorado State, you know, is a group of five team and all that. They get this game at home, though. However, it's a losable game for Colorado. It wouldn't really shock me if they did lose that game because that is a rival game. I think, you know, it should be played every single year. But, you know, this will be pretty interesting non-conference game here for Colorado. I think they'll be at least favored by at least a couple touchdowns, about double digits. And yes, I don't have any green or purple games on this schedule, so let, let's now go to the underdog games. Uh, these are games where they're going to be underdogs in, and however, I don't have any red games on this schedule. Uh, we go to the games now where they're going to be about a couple touchdowns of underdogs and the 20% in the orange, and that's almost the majority of their schedule. It's TCU, Oregon, both on the road, USC, UCLA on the road as well, and then Oregon State at home, and then Utah on the road as well. So I think all these games, Colorado is going to be about a couple touchdowns of underdogs. Uh, these are very tough matchups for them. You know, TCU obviously went to the playoff last year. Oregon, perhaps a playoff contender heading into this year. USC, the same thing. Uh, UCLA has a lot of question marks, but they're they should be overall still pretty good. And plus, that's a road game. That's going to be a very tough place to play. And then Oregon State. Uh, the DJ Ogilvy coming in at quarterback, but you know how good will they be? But this will be a tough one there at home, and then Utah there on the road. Cam Rising coming back at quarterback, and the Pac-12 has a lot of quarterback production uh, coming back for some of these teams, especially with Oregon and Utah. And you know Oregon State, they have a guy that has veteran experience with the game, but. Yeah, all these games right here, these are going to be really tough games in the orange for Colorado to win. I really don't expect them, you know, to win these games, but, you know, they're going to be about a couple touchdowns of underdogs. And like I said, these are just based off of where the teams were from last year. And all, you know, these games in the orange, these teams were really good last year. They were all contenders for the Pac-12 and also for a Pac-12 championship spot as well. So... But let's go to the games now where Colorado is going to be about a touchdown of the underdog in the 40% range in the yellow. And really, I only got one game on that schedule, and that's Washington State. I think this is the only winnable game on the road for Colorado. Uh, this is a game, you know, in the yellow that's very winnable. But, you know, I don't really think they'll still be favorites, though. I think they'll be at least, you know, a touchdown of an underdog, though. Uh, Washington State did go to a bowl game last year. I know that should probably be in the orange. But... I'm going to stick with it and put it in the yellow just for right now. And again, this is a Colorado team that you probably don't want to play in the month of November. This team could be better by this time, but how the question is how good uh, will they be at the end of the season? But the rest of the games here for Colorado, Nebraska, Arizona State on the road, Stanford and Arizona. I think all these games are 50-50 games. That Nebraska game is a really tough one for me. I mean, if it was a road game for Colorado, I probably would put it in the yellow. But as of right now, I'm going to put it in the white. I think Nebraska is going to be really good this year, perhaps. But, you know, you never know about Nebraska. Uh, they have a first-year head coaching staff, and both of these teams are just kind of similar to each other last year. However, Colorado was worse than Nebraska, so there's a lot of question marks that this game could go either way. But Arizona State, Stanford, and Arizona, I think all these games in the Pac-12 are winnable uh, for them. So there's a possible chance they can win three games in the Pac-12. That's their best chance, maybe two of them. So if you can at least get three wins in the Pac-12, uh, this season, that will be the good sign there. But, you know, if you get maybe five wins, that will be another good sign. But 
if they don't get, you know, to if they don't um, win like three or, you know, maybe three, if they don't win more than three games, that would be kind of brutal for Colorado and things could start to change a little bit different. But let's now get to the projected record for this Colorado team. So if you look at the schedule, again, not my official prediction for this team. This is simply a projection based on that schedule. And you look at the games that they're favored in. That's the only game there in the blue with Colorado State and the games that they're underdogs in in the orange and that one game in the yellow against Washington State. And then you count the 50-50 games here with Nebraska, Arizona State, and Stanford, and then Arizona. You get an overall projected record at 4-8 for this Colorado team. So 4-8, more wins than last year. If they go 5-7, and seven, that's a big improvement for them heading into 2024 to next year. But as of right now, this is how the projection stands out. So 4-8. and 5-7, and seven, though, is really possible for this team. If they can get that good win there somewhere on the road some of these games, I don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, 4-8 and eight is really possible. And also 5-7 and seven is really possible for them. So... But let me guys know what you think about this um, projection for Colorado. What do you think their worst case scenario will be? What do you think their best case scenario is for 2023? And stay tuned here for more sports content on the Lucas Ross Sports Channel.